So when it comes to building a uh, custom ROM for a device that's never been built before, um, there's, there's a lot that goes into that. And I'd like to try to attempt that on a phone that I have. And that phone is the uh, Blue Life One X2. There's a couple of reasons why I want to do this phone, but uh, primarily it's because it's just an extra phone that I have. Uh, was a phone that was my wife's, and um, the screen got broken. And it still functions, but it doesn't uh, doesn't look all that pretty. So, really useful phone for this project. Um, there is no device tree available for the Blue Life One X2. I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to it as the Block Two from here on out, just because it's really long to say Blue Life One X2. And um, so this is this is going to be an experiment. But uh, what I want to work on is how do we build a device tree? Now there is a recovery tree that's been built for building uh, Team Win recovery project for the blocks too, um, but that's it. There's no custom ROMs available for it other than stock ROMs that have been modified. And there is one um, CyEngine mod uh, Marshmallow ROM that was built utilizing uh, porting methods. And of course, porting is different than compiling. Compiling, we get the source code and we build it from the ground up. Porting is where you take an already built ROM for something else and you modify it to work on a different phone. And, and there is a port for it. However, it, uh, it is not fully functional. So how would we even get started? Well, here we are, we're at the Lineage OS um, you know, website here. And I guess what I really wanna do is go to Google. And the biggest thing that you're gonna have to do is research. You can use Google, you can use DuckDuckGo. Um, often for myself, I use DuckDuckGo. But either way, uh, the purpose is that you have to do some research about the phone. So let's look at the specs of a blue Life One X2. And we'll just pick uh, GSM Arena. Let's do that. So if you're going to build a device tree for a device that's never been built before, expect to do a lot of research and a lot of work. Um, and, and we're gonna walk through this process together. I'm not gonna promise you that it's gonna work when we're all done, but at least the ideas of what we're trying to do will um, hopefully point you in the right direction. And if we're, uh, if we're really lucky, hopefully this will even boot and maybe even uh, some of these things will work. So we have the Blue Life 1X2, um, 1080 by 1920, 5.2 inch screen, 16 megapixel, 1080p, uh, camera, four gigabytes of RAM, and a Snapdragon 430 uh, processor with a 3150 milliamp hour battery. So just some quick specs on it. But this actually matters, you know. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to build Android for something that has been built before, but there's no source tree available to the rest of us. Essentially, a stock ROM is a custom ROM that was built by whatever vendor it is. So Blue built their own custom ROM, really, if you think about it, the Blue ROM. I, I don't know what they call their ROM. Samsung builds TouchWiz ROMs. Um, HTC used to build Sense ROMs, I think it was called. Um, but, but anyways, they build their own custom ROM. And so we want to build our own custom ROM. And we're going to start with Lineage um, OS. And that's why we built the Marshmallow Builder earlier. You might wonder why we're going to start with Marshmallow. Well, that's because that's what this phone originally was released as, and I think the only version that's available for this phone. And that's important because you want to start with what it already had because all the vendor blobs, all that stuff is, should work properly. So that's why we think uh, Lineage OS Marshmallow. Uh, so the first thing we want to look at is what system on a chip does it have? And it has a Qualcomm MSM 8937 Snapdragon 430. And let's Google that. So Snapdragon 430 processor, right? Made by Qualcomm. 
Uh, yeah, that's, that's great. Okay. So it's made by Qualcomm and it tells us some things about it. So we know right off the bat, look at this, it has an Adreno 505 GPU. So we're going to need to find files that make this processor and this GPU work if we want this to be successful. Um, and then it tells us a lot of other things in here. It's uh, CPU is 8 ARM Cortex A53. Okay, so that's helpful. So we know that that's what we're going to be looking for. Uh, the cellular modem is a Qualcomm Snapdragon X6 LTE modem. So if we could maybe find some other phones that have an X6 LTE modem that device trees are known, then maybe we can steal some work from that. Uh, you know, Hexagon 536, all this information is telling us what we're looking for when we build the device tree. RF, Qualcomm RF360 front end solution. So we're going to bookmark this page because we're going to need this later. Bluetooth, WCN 3680B. We can figure out what other phones are using this Bluetooth and maybe we can steal their work from their device trees to make ours work. Okay, so lots of research, and we're going to be coming back to this in a little bit. So what I want to see, though, is can we see what other phones utilize this processor? The so smartphones with Qualcomm Snapdragon 430 MSM 8937 processor. That is uh, a big, big help. So it's taking a second to load here. I've got pretty slow internet. They should have pictures in here somewhere. But what we see is a bunch of phones that have the same processor. And some of these phones, I would bet, we can find a device tree that's already built for. So let's, uh, let's pick this Nokia 5. Let's take a look at that. Um, we'll say, Nokia 5 CSM Arena. So let's look at that one. Now it's a 5.2 screen, but it's 720 by 1280 pixels, right? Slightly different. Lower quality camera. Less RAM, but still has that Snapdragon 430 processor. So that's good. So maybe we can steal some stuff for that. But notice the OS, it's all Android 7.1, Android 8.0. It's going to be a little too new for what we're trying to do. So probably not what we're looking for. What's another phone here? Um, Sony Xperia R1. We'll try that. Uh, let's see. I don't know if the R1 is the R1 Plus. Okay, yep, Snapdragon 430. Um, again, uh, slightly lower quality camera, but a little new, Android 7.1. Let's, uh, let's look at another one here. Let's see. I want Eureka Black. Eureka Black. Let's try that. Eureka Black. Open that up here. Okay, so 1080 by 1920. What was that? 1080 by 1920. Okay, same resolution, slightly lower camera, but look, same amount of RAM, same processor. Same amount of RAM, same processor. Okay, so this is good. Oh, also built for Marshmallow. Looks like we might have a winner here. So now we would see is maybe their custom ROM for Eureka Black. Good place to look for that, XDA, right? Or you could just type Lineage OS. Whew, they've got it updated all the way to 8.1, so it looks like uh, looks like we might have a winner here. Uh, 13.0. We'll, we'll 
go back to marshmallow. Okay. Lineage OS 13 for Eureka Black. Um, what's working? GPS, LED, flash, sensors, audio, video, camera, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, radio, and it boots. So that's good. All right. What doesn't work is Bolt. Now, not everything from this phone would necessarily help us, but uh, would definitely be a point in the right direction. So let's open up this device tree and their vendor tree. Okay. And I guess garlic is the code name for this thing. Let's see what we got here. We've got the only branch here is 13, which is fine. That's all we need is marshmallow. So um, let's go ahead and bookmark this tree. We can use that for some reference. And the vendor for garlic right here, right? And it's got their, their stuff. And we're going to want to take vendor from our own phone, but uh, we might need a few extra things. So this will help, and it will give us a guide for what our vendor file should look like. So let's, uh, I only have for 14.1 here, but we'll, we'll bookmark it here. We'll come back to that. So we'll go ahead and bookmark this just in case we need some more references, links, or to talk to somebody. Um, we'll bookmark this for reference. We'll bookmark this for reference. And this. Pretty much bookmark everything. There we go. So this is going to start our grand adventure where we are going to start looking at building our own device tree. And we're going to do that by doing first a lot of research. So uh, another place that we need to go for uh, getting some information is we need the kernel. Blue Life 1X2 kernel. All right, uh, looks like somebody's made some custom kernel. And blocks2.com, it looks like uh, uh, I've been to this site before. This, this uh, gentleman put together a great site with a lot of information. OK. So kernel sources released and butter kernel released. So let's take a look at those. Download the kernel source. That's a good place to start. So obviously that was not as great a place to start as I was hoping. But we'll uh, we'll download the kernel source. Um, see if we can find it on GitHub here. Uh, XDA is also a really great place to look. See what we got here. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the video here. I'll dig around. I'll download that kernel. Um, that is the big key thing for any device you want to build. Uh, two things that you need is the device has to be um, able to be unlocked in the bootloader and um, that the, you need the device kernel source. Without those two things, you have no chance of success of building uh, custom ROM, so uh, at least from source code. So let's uh, let's download some stuff and get started. Just a quick update here. I was able to find on GitHub, um, SRG Russo um, has put together um, the kernel. And we call it device tree, but it's the device tree for actually building um, 
team win recovery project. So um, we're definitely going to bookmark this. We're going to um, bookmark this kernel. And those will be some good resources for us as we go along. So we're going to download some stuff and get ready to get started. <laughs> 